Inductors are one of the most used components in electricity and electronics. They are used to model transmission lines and electrical machines, to filter unwanted signals. They are the heart of inductive chargers and are used in radio transmission. Inductors are also used to improve the quality of electricity, to create magnets, and tons of other applications. Their appliances are based on two different but very related physical phenomena. One of them is related with the so known Faraday lens law. The other phenomenon has to do with Ampere's law. In this video we will go over both phenomena, how to make them happen, how to make them more evident, and why are they used for. Let's start with the easy one, Ampere's law. Around a conductor with an electric current, a magnetic field is established. Notice the magnetic field along the conductor. With Ampere's law we arrive to the conclusion that if we make a coil, the magnetic field inside it is very strong. The magnetic field has now increased by a factor of n, where n is the amount of turns. This means, the field is proportional to the amount of turns. Remember, for this to happen, an electric current must be established in the conductor. Let's disconnect the power source. You can see the current is still flowing. But where's the energy coming from? As you may suspect, it's coming from the inductor, which is now the power source. Of course, as this energy is consumed by the resistor, the inductor is getting discharged. You can clearly see how the magnitude of the magnetic field decreases as time passes. What we just saw led us to the conclusion that an inductor is capable of storing energy in the form of magnetic fields. Later in this video, we will see how can we increase the amount of energy that is stored. The fact that inductors are able of storing energy makes them very important in science. However, the greatest use given to inductors has to do with another law. Faraday Lenz Law. This law states that, if a conductor is submerged in a variable magnetic flux, a voltage will be induced in that conductor's ends. The law is compatible with the conservation of energy, as you will see in some minutes. However, that topic will be most discussed in a future video about electrical transformers. Notice an external magnetic flux is established through a conducting material. If we make that flux variant, a voltage will be induced in the conductor, just as Faraday Lenz law states. This voltage is represented by the positive and negative symbols. There are different techniques to induce a voltage, let's see. If we move the conductor relative to the magnetic field, by cutting lines of flux, you can see a voltage is induced. Although the magnetic flux is not changing, for the moving conductor, it is. Notice what happens when the conductor moves faster. The induced voltage increases. This is how electrical generators work. They move conductors arranged in a specific way inside a magnetic flux. But notice that if we move the conductor without cutting lines of flux, no voltage is induced. Other technique for inducing a voltage is, obviously, varying the flux's magnitude. For a constant rate of change, a constant induced voltage. The faster it changes, the greater the voltage. This isn't how they actually do it in real life, but this is the concept. In some minutes, we will show how can we increase the magnitude of the induced voltage even more, which is a more realistic situation. But in these situations, the magnetic field was external. What happens when a current is flowing through the inductor? In this circuit, the established electric current is constant. You can see there's no variable magnetic flux, so there's no induced voltage in the inductor. If we increase progressively the voltage of the power source, the current will start to increase, generating a variable magnetic flux. Due to this, a voltage will be induced in the inductor. This phenomenon is called auto-induction. Notice this voltage opposes the voltage of the power source. This is because the inductor tries to maintain the current of the circuit constant, so its voltage must oppose the voltage of the power source. This is what I meant with conservation of energy. Let's see what happens when the voltage of the power source decreases. The magnetic flux in the inductor is now decreasing. A voltage is induced, but in the other direction. As explained just a few seconds ago, the inductor is trying to maintain constant the current through the circuit. In order to do this, now it must help the power source. The capability of an inductor to auto-induce voltage is given by a coefficient called inductance or auto-inductance coefficient, denoted by the letter L. 
Other very important phenomenon related with inductors is that they can induce the voltage in nearby circuits. In the same way that they can induce voltage on their own circuit. Let's consider two inductors. A variable electric current is established in what we will call the old inductor. This inductor is generating a strong variable magnetic flux. If this magnetic flux passes through the new inductor, a voltage will be induced in it. You may have noticed that there's no magnetic field around the new inductor. This is because there's no electric current through it. But as there's a voltage between its terminals, if we connected it in a circuit, a current would flow through it, generating a magnetic field. Due to conservation of energy, this magnetic field would oppose the magnetic field of the old inductor. The capability of two circuits to induce a voltage to each other is called mutual inductance. It is represented by the letter M, and it has units of Henry. Until now, we talked about two different coefficients, inductance and mutual inductance. They both depend on practically the same things. In some cases, it's important for this coefficient to be high, in others, to be low. These coefficients will also determine how much energy can inductors actually store. Of course, the higher their values are, the greater the stored energy will be. Besides, increasing the value of these coefficients will increase the induced voltage. Starting with the inductance, we will represent its value with the letter L. Increasing the number of turns. By doing this, more lines of flux cut the coil. Increasing its area. In this case, it's easier for the flux to pass through the inductor, so more magnetic flux will be established inside it. Reducing its length. This helps the magnetic flux to close. However, in a few cases, increasing the length increases the inductance. And one of the most important factors, adding a ferromagnetic material inside the inductor. This will reinforce the magnetic field and increase the inductance by a factor of even 10,000. Some materials, however, don't help at all, like copper. There are other factors that can change the inductance, but they depend mainly on the geometry and might increase or decrease the inductance depending on each case. For the mutual inductance, it's practically the same. The difference is we need to increase the amount of turns of both inductors. Or at least, increasing the turns of one of them in a greater factor than the reduction of the other. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe and if you want to suggest a video, just leave it in the comments below.